All right, guys, we have a full serving of butter beans for you. Friday Night Fights on the Deuce presented by Budweiser. Eric Esch, known as Butterbean, taking on Kevin Talon in a four-round heavyweight bout. Kevin Talon is 5'11 out of Lawrenceburg, Indiana. 209 pounds. He's 35 years of age with a nondescript record of 5-3 and three with three knockouts. He was knocked out in his last fight. And Butterbean out of Jasper, Alabama, a fan favorite. King of the four-rounders. 302 pounds. He has a 100-pound advantage over Talon tonight. 41-1 and one with 31 knockouts. Unified rules, no three knockdown, no standing eight. Fighter may not be saved by the bell in any round. Only the referee can stop the fight. And accidental cuts, they'll go to the scorecards after four rounds are complete. Of course, this is a four-rounder, and Butterbean never has to worry about those type of things. Butterbean was last in action in February in Las Vegas and scored a third-round knockout against Patrick Graham. Actually, uh... If you count it, Bob, this is his second fight this week for Butterbean because he fought on WrestleMania just last Sunday. He won a one-round KO over Bart Gunn. So oh, he's amazing. He doesn't care where he takes the show. He takes it where the most cameras are. So he can go on Jay Leno's show afterwards. And he makes no airs about it. He's a gutsy guy. He can punch a little bit at a certain level. But he's in there to do his thing, which is to entertain and which is to, you know, be able to make the circuit. He'll mix it up with you. We saw him on September the 18th. He scored a third-round knockout against Troy Roberts here on the deuce. Last year in Boise, Idaho, a four-round decision against Harry Funmaker. And it was a very interesting fight. It was uh, Kenny Keene fought in the main event. Butterbean was in a little bit of a slugfest that night. So where's the name Butterbean come from? You look at this big, hulking guy. He was involved in tough man competitions, and he was over the weight limit. He was over 400 pounds, and... He had to go on a diet and lose weight, and he ate nothing but butter beans, so the legend has it. Talon is a guy who had a big inactivity period from 85 to 97. 12 years he was inactive after having turned pro in 85. In his last fight, Talon was knocked out in one round on October 10th by Benjamin Baker. Obviously, when you get opponents for butter bean, you have to be careful. Let's be honest here. You got to get guys that are not real gifted. Well, that's what made that Funmaker match last year here on the Deuce interesting because Harry Funmaker was more than willing to mix it up with Butterbean and, and had his moments in that fight. Although, Butterbean came away with a four-round decision. If you need anything else to tell you about the opponents of Butterbean, June 16th, uh, Talon lost a decision to Andre Crowder, a six-round decision. Now, Crowder has two wins in his last 48 fights, one of them against Talon. Butterbean, a little head movement, getting into it a little bit. Talon answering back at the right hand of his own. Thirty seconds to go in this first round, four-round bout. Of course, Butterbean's involved. This is a fight that the opponents for Butterbean with Talon. You don't expect him to use his height. You expect him at this level to probably be the kind of opponent that is stand right in front of Butterbean and mix it up. Butterbean doesn't want to be in there with guys that are going to act like Ali. As we come to the end of round number one, Butterbean in control. Talon with some counter punching of his own. Butterbean missing with a right hand, scoring with a left and a right as Talon comes in to end round number one. Some punch numbers in round number one. Butterbean and Kevin Allen. And you see that Butterbean busier, landed more shots, and basically won the round. Which is the way it's supposed to be, isn't it, Bob? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Butterbean opponents, they come, they try, but obviously one of the key jobs to be in the team of Butterbean is the guy who selects the opponents. 
And part of being is a gutsy guy, as I said earlier, you give him credit. He makes no ads about being a great fight or anything. He's an entertainer. He makes the trips to the night shows and all that stuff. And he's there to really make people happy and to, you know, promote himself. But obviously, it's very important that he's in there with the right opponents. Well, here's the only way you can beat Butterbean. Butterbean only has one loss. You have to do what Mitchell Rose did back in 1995 in New York. You have to knock him out. Not that we want to be too critical here, Butterbean's in there, but the shorter guy, when he gets inside, you don't want to, you wouldn't want to see Butterbean putting his hands behind the guy. He's a shorter guy, obviously he wants to keep his hands free, wants to work on the taller guy. Okay, let's talk a little bit about, you see the huge back of Butterbean. Let's talk a little bit about his boxing skills. I mean, do they sometimes get a little bit overlooked? Is he maybe a little bit better than the novelty that he is? Oh, he's, I mean, He's had all these fights. Let's face it. He's, he's had a great deal of fights here. He's 40. What's he? 40 and one and. Uh, well, what's his? How many fights does he have? Well, Talon just got knocked, and Burby trying to add his 30-second knockout, and he sends Talon down here in round two. He played a good body shot there. Butterbean zeroing in on a 40-second win Six, and a 30-second knockout. Eight, Lawrence Cole with the count. Like we were saying earlier, he's got 42 fights, Butterbean. You learn something from fighting, just from getting in the ring that often. You do learn. And there are little subtle things he does. He slips, he works his way in. Yes, sometimes he doesn't get credit because he's the Butterbean for doing certain things uh, the correct way. Obviously, his talent, though, is at, a, is at a certain stage. He doesn't have the talent even to do those things real well with a high grade of opponent. Hey, They're going to clean off the mouthpiece of Talon, who is knocked down here in the second round by Butterbean. And Butterbean comfortably in control in this four-round bout as he continues to pound the overmatched Talon. Remember, under the unified Eight. rules, you cannot Come be saved in. by the bell in okay. any round. All right. round. Now that Talon makes it a count, the, the round now. does come to an end. Kevin Talon, the punching bag for Butterbean. No. No. Listen, the game is done again. Yeah, one thing you got to notice here that you do, we talked about giving him credit. He gets himself into range, he misses the right hand, follows with the left hook, then he goes to the body. He switches to the body, goes back up to the head. And one thing, when he has his guy defensive, he stays on him. There again, as he's going down, he gives him a body shot. So he's thinking in there. You take a guy off the street, a lot of people say, yeah, this guy beat the heck out of Butterbean. No, that's not true. Yeah. That is not true. Exactly. That is where the separation really should be understood. Yeah, I've... He's calm, he doesn't get excited in there with this kind of level guy. Another guy would get excited and he'd be out of breath in 30 seconds. Why? Not because he's not in shape, because he would get so anxious and so nervous. Butterbean is much better than that. Well, as you know, I'm around a lot of the NFL guys and the NBA guys, and you know, they're always asking about Butterbean, and ah, I get in the ring with Butterbean, and it's like, no, it's just not that easy. It's like me saying, well, I could post you up in basketball. It's not that easy. I mean, look at, look at the, just look at the track record. You have a president to, to look back on those things. Matt Mark Arsenault, they had him in, with less than ordinary guys. And when he fought a guy who was, who was just even close to a journeyman, it was no contest. Just because he's a football player doesn't mean that he's able to go in there and control his emotions and have those kind of talents in this arena. Obviously, at two tall Jones, the great defensive lineman from the Dallas Cowboys. Didn't do too well. And neither is Kevin Talon. He gets batted around by Butterbean here in round number three. Butterbean is placing his punches pretty well, even though they're of the wide variety. He missed the left hook before he came back with a right uppercut underneath. He knows if he misses the head, he should go to the body automatically. Straighten the guy up a little bit. Not miss two punches in a row if he can help. You know, there had been some talk about Butterbean fighting Shaquille O'Neal because there was the NBA lockout, a little publicity. I don't think Shaq with a $100 million basketball contract in his pocket was necessarily wanted to step in the ring and get punched. But uh, 
again, you know, Butterbean has some boxing skills. Yeah, and, I mean, again, people would say, oh, Shaquille O'Neal would beat him because he's a bigger guy, he's a big, strong athlete. No, when he gets in the ring, all of a sudden, he wouldn't feel like such a big, strong athlete with a guy coming at him. It's a whole different philosophy, it's a whole different psyche. It's a whole different sport. But the way Talon's getting pounded, he may think he's Michael Jordan at this point. Butterbean just teeing off. And the only reason more of those punches are not landing is because Butterbean's punches obviously are wide. So a lot of times Talon doesn't make a miss, Butterbean misses by being wide. Butterbean's picking the right punch there. He's got a guy in front of him who's covering up, so he brings the uppercut up. Try to straighten him up. Butterbean is a little more exciting, though, when the opponent in front of him can nail him a little bit, like Fun Maker, but Talon just can't. And Butterbean finishes him off here in round number three. It's all right. It's all right. So Butterbean picks up his 30-second stoppage, and Kevin Talon has been knocked out for the second consecutive fight. He falls closer to the 500 mark. And Doc, you just want to take a second, quick look at him. The fan favorite, Butterbean, goes across the ring and congratulates Talent. <laughs> Congratulations for taking some shots. Exactly. Today we'll take a look at the uh, knockouts that stop in Talent. Seems okay. Well, Butterbean, of course, is going to be on the, on the push here. Be the aggressive, the right hand there is the big punch. He follows it with a left hook. So instead of one punch, two land. That does the job. We'll take one more look at it. He picks the right punch. He throws the uppercut. He's got a man who's leaning forward, who's covered up. He brings the uppercut up, and then he goes up top. And then he moves his head a little bit to try to make the punches, which he did. Make the punches, okay. the return punches miss. The right hand over top really did the damage in this fight. And that's what was the finisher right there. When you got a guy standing straight up, you can land that overhand right. It doesn't have to be straight. Well, Butterbean comes into Chattanooga, Tennessee and gets the job done. Fans wanted to see him win, and he does. He stops Kevin Tallon in round number three.